Welcome back to Rod's Radios. This is part four of the Grundig 2400 restoration and repair. And since the last video, which was about two weeks ago, I received the little printed circuit panel that I had designed for the external audio amplifier, which I was kind of forced into using because of the fact that I couldn't access the, uh, the main printed circuit panel. And I also suspected that uh, it was corroded, which was causing the problem of distortion. If you remember, I decided to rebuild the amplifier of one complete channel on this little board. Let's see how it turned out. And here's the audio output board completed at this stage. And I wired it in loosely to the existing input from the radio and the external speakers wired here and I've powered it separately by these two leads here, the black and the red one. And you can see I have a, a homemade heat sink strapped to the back of the chip to dissipate the heat, but I don't think it, it produces much heat anyway. So let's hear what, what it sounds like. Today coming from the Sonatas at number 15 in This is the good channel that was originally okay. I'm adjusting the balance control now. And this is the new audio amp, which sounds pretty good. So the next job is to stitch it in permanently or semi-permanently onto the chassis somewhere and I'll show you where I'm going to put it. This is the back panel to the radio and near the top there's this compartment which was originally used to store the mains cable. However with the three pin plug we use here it certainly wouldn't fit in there anymore so it has no practical use. However I intend to fit the audio module into this area here so I think that should be a solution. You may remember during the last episode that the digital counter on the front here stopped working on any of the AM bands. FM was fine, the frequency was rock steady and accurate compared to the manual dial up here. However, on AM, the numbers just danced all over the place and bore no resemblance at all to the frequency on the scale above. So it was time to look at this little module here to see what the problem was. Let's have a look at the service manual. So this is the area of the digital counter module that shows up the frequency digitally and it's handled by this big chip here. And as far as I could make out, the signal from the FM stage comes down at this point here and is fed in directly into the chip. Whereas the AM signals come through here and here and go through these two transistors before they get into the chip. So I am immediately suspected what, that one of these was faulty. And indeed, when I started to take some measurements, I found that on the emitter here, there was a, a voltage of 2.5 volts rather than the 0.5 volts specified here. So I, what I did is I just replaced this transistor here and suddenly the AM started working perfectly. So it's strange that this transistor, a BF241, is exactly the same type of transistor that I found to be faulty in one of the earlier episodes up in the FMIF section, which was causing the FM not to work at all. So maybe there was a duff batch of BF241s around this time. Who knows? Anyway, it's working perfectly now as far as the digital counter is concerned. I've disconnected the cables feeding the faulty audio section down here and replaced it with a loom of wires that I've stitched into the various supplies, whether they be power going to that module, input or in fact loudspeaker. And So we have a loom of wires out at this point here at which I'm going to connect it up to the, the little module. Here's the little module completed and I'll do that with the aid of these little header pins sockets, which will plug into the pins that I've placed on the PCB. 
And eventually the idea is that the board will sit up roughly in this position here inside the back of the case. Hopefully it's not going to interfere with the, the radio section, but uh, fingers crossed for that. So let's see how that goes. I've tidied up the wiring that goes into the new module. And as you can see here, I've fitted heat shrink to the little plugs that plug into the sockets on the board. So it's still working, thank goodness, even though I did find uh, I had disconnected one of the earth leads, which gave some peculiar results. So as you can hear now, when I turn on. It's operation in July, lots of people are taking. Year on year for those tendencies was about 200. Portugal in the accountability then was the other thing you talked about as well as so the sound is really good it's clear crisp the channels balance one another out perfectly because of the identical output stage I've made so the next thing is to start thinking about uh, alignment I decided to leave the FM alignment alone because the selectivity and sensitivity on this radio is absolutely fantastic. It's unbelievable. I can pick up occasionally stations from the UK over here in Ireland, which is normally unheard of. As far as the AM is concerned, I started to do some of the alignment, the IF alignment, and found some of the test points were actually inaccessible. And I don't think I'll go any further with this. If you want to see how alignment should be done, Manuel Caldera over in Madeira Island is has a YouTube channel. It's called Electronics Old and New, and he is the definitive master of describing alignment and alignment procedures in European radios. So if you want the definitive guide, Manuel's your man. So here I think I'm going to go as far as I can with this. The radio is really sounding good and I'm very happy with it. So it's time to start thinking about putting it back into the cabinet. The back cover is now in place and you can see the audio module sitting in the little cavity that I mentioned earlier. Snug as a bug in a rug. So let's hear how it sounds after all this work. Um, there's not much on shortwave at this time of the day except for around the middle band, around the 25 meter band. So let's have a listen to that and see what's on. So as you can hear, it's pretty sensitive and, and fairly selective. So let's try one of the other bands, say medium wave. Now, again, here in Ireland, there's not many uh, stations on medium wave, but we do tend to pick up, um, I think that's Radio 4 from the UK. It's a little bit weak. And if we go up the band a bit, we should get another one. Between the M1 Junction 32 and Junction 1 of the M18. Yeah, that's Radio Radio 5 from the UK. 
the moment they're holding all traffic to try and deal on 909 with that. so as you'd imagine it's stationary for now then the m6 and on long wave we probably won't get very much this time of day either oh yeah we get the extra charge will become a standalone tax called the health and social we get radio Levels. four the working pensioners will pay too the tax on share dividends will go up but i think where this radio shines is on fm so if we switch over to fm and i'll go down to the beginning of the band and we'll tune up and you'll see how many stations we get but the minister said he had made mistakes in recent weeks in explaining how the position came about. Not Fulfain has said that our options remain on the table when it comes to the question of a possible more confidence motion in the foreign affairs. This hour from Charlie Brown, Alexandra Burke and Future Heads. Yeah. By Jim Plus. Operating now in eight locations. Jim Plus. I still have Reader, serious stuff in the next hour and a half. We're obviously Ireland are looking to um, just get that. Youth uh, initiative both with amazing stories to tell. So enjoy that. And uh, the kids is Stashun Gardi. Staying in their own home, but you know, the bathroom is upstairs. Yeah, I'm trying to get some control as well and see if we can do that. <laughs> Picked up any points, would have scored one. Jim Crawford would have been definitely yeah. best actress and actor. The show also won best drama. It's chilly, but there's a bit of an adrenal adrenaline rush attached to all of this. I think that's why people are doing. It's not being held to a one all draw in Dudeland by Luxembourg in their latest Europe. Blue Jean Baby. Everyone should have the same protection. So in the late 80s, so. What are the latest COVID 19 case numbers being reported this evening? Yeah, one Traffic and travel updates with MSL Park Motors Mercedes Benz. Bill. 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 Yes, seven men and five women were arrested today. In order, and the evenings are not bad. So now is a good time to do it. And what we want you to do is to pick a target, any target. If you are somebody... Okay. So my second year in Fern, we're talking. Maybe you run 5Ks in 25, 26 minutes. You want... So you can see how sensitive and how selective it is on FM. I'm really pleased with this radio. It's turned out quite well. Now, I did fall at the last fence because, as you may have noticed, there's no illumination in the dial on the front here because I had to take the chassis out on at least two occasions to sort out the wiring looms, which were getting in the way of allowing the chassis to fit in correctly into the cabinet. And I think the last time I put it back in, I must have snagged one of the wires leading to the uh, the light uh, illumination section. So I decided to leave it as it was and uh, do without the illumination on the front. It's probably something I'll address maybe in a few months time when I decide to attack this again and take it out of its cabinet. But at the moment, it's working really well. So thanks a lot for staying with me through this long tortuous repair and restoration i got this radio in may and it's now the beginning of september so uh, i was dipping in and out of it all the time sometimes waiting for parts to come in and uh, sometimes just thinking about what i was going to do for the next stage so if you have been thanks for watching <laughs>